on Europeans. Good evening, Europe. <laughs> it's Monty. And it's Jody Rose. And we're saying school from Malmö uh, here at the Eurovision Song Contest. We hope you're very well. I'm just going to have a little sip of this. We've just uh, absconded ourselves outside of the Eurofan Cafe, which is fabulous, I have to say. Great atmosphere. It's our second night in Malmö, and we are really enjoying ourselves, and we hope you're following us on the blog. So, as you can see, we're positioned outside of a disused bar, which is uh, not showing the best of the venue to its best advantage, but uh, we're making do, we should come to a quiet place. So, yes. we've had a fabulous time so far. We've been, um, we arrived yesterday, and we went to the San Marino party, and there wasn't much cheese. It was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't much cheese. But no, Ricky's agreeing by shaking his head. Fabulous food yeah. though. <laughs> fabulous food and fabulous veggie food for it your was, man. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. Yeah. Um, uh, Valentina Monetta did the, the Valentina Monetta show by doing a whole set of her um, experimental jazz, which was um, which was lovely to hear. And um, but she didn't have any anybody else with her, which was a bit of a shame that there were no other artists. But it was a great night anyway. Um, tonight we are at the Eurofan Cafe. We've been listening to Rick um, doing his chat show. So we've uh, had chats with. Um, several artists that I can't remember the name of. Um, uh, but anyway, we thought we'd just give you a little rundown because we've seen, yeah. obviously, the um, the first rehearsal of, the second rehearsal of the first semi-final today. So we thought we'd give you our thoughts. Yeah. We've seen all of them today. A very long day for all of us in the um, the press centre, the IKEA press centre. It's fabulous, by the way. Um, so 16 songs today. Should we just crack on then? Crack on. Yeah, OK. So, um, Austria, she's so lovely. Natalia from Austria is so lovely. I fear the song is not as lovely as she is. So, I fear she's not going through. Shame. I pressed something and I don't know what's next. Uh, Estonia is next. Yes. Um, Estonia is its very nice. It's a very lovely man. And Birgit sings it well. She starts on the satellite stage. And it, it really, really emphasizes it. She walks back to the main stage in the second verse. And it's very pretty. I think it could go through, but... It really depends on everything else that's there. Yeah. We've um, we've lost the list of what comes <laughs> next. Yeah, we don't know it off. We, we, oh, camera this way, sorry. We don't know it off by heart just yet. Um, I, I would I would echo um, Estonia. I think it's going through though. Um, next is Slovenia. Oh my God, we've just seen her in the Euro Club. Hanna Mancini Montana. She is fabulous. She's got legs all the way up to her legs. She's a game old bird. The song might not get the vote, but she so should because it's a really, really good dance up tempo number, and I think Saturday night deserves her in it. So I would, I would champion her in the final. Absolutely, I would as well. Um, after Hannah, we've got Croatia. Um, it's the Klapas Moria. Now I have to say, it's not really my style of song, but we've just seen them tonight in the European Cafe, and they deliver such an amazing vocal performance that it's really, it's hard not to warm to. To, to, to their, their vocal abilities at least, even though you don't like the music. So, I don't know, I think this could go through. I think it could be, uh, it'd be a surprise for me, um, but I think, it, I think it could just sneak through, just because vocally they are so, yeah. so spectacular. Yeah. Absolutely, I think creation is a jury sponge, but we'll find out uh, in a few days. Okay, Denmark next, the hot favourite with the Buckies. Um, yeah, it's good, it, it gets to the point straight away, this song. Uh, within 10 seconds, the churning beat starts and you're left in no doubt where this song is going, which is a really good thing. She does a little thing around the, the, the whistler, which she's not comfortable with herself, I can tell. But I don't, I don't think there's much wrong with this. Her vocal, people have been saying it's not good, but actually there's not much wrong with it. For the first time, general viewer, it, it's obviously going to be one of the top songs. We had them um, in the Danish press conference today. They gave out penny whistles um, because they, they're playing them in the song. And it was, um, it was one of those ideas that probably seemed good at the time. But um, all we had was a lot of amateur press harping on their instruments when they couldn't really harp on them at all. So it was a little bit banging on my last nerve to be the, to the end of it, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Russia is up next. Russia, it's, oh my God, it's so by numbers. It's, it's a really kind of, I don't know, it's kind of, it really doesn't grab me. It's such a formulaic song, it's really, it knows what it's trying to be. Um, but it's just not really ticking my box. So there's a bit, there's a bit on stage where the, the, the dancers kick their balls out into this, to the audience. We're not really sure what that's going to look like on Tuesday night because it didn't seem to work today. Um, but yeah, tune in on Tuesday night and see what you think. She's wearing a very frumpy frock though, I have to say. <laughs> 
For me, Russia's the best ballad, but it will be seen whether she'll qualify. Well, it's Russia, so she probably will. Okay, um, Ukraine's next. Second favourite with the Buckies, so one to watch, obviously, but they've really, really confused us with their rehearsals because they've got a giant, an eight-foot-four giant from Montana, no, Minnesota. And it really does really, really take away from the song, and it's very distracting. And it's seen as a little bit exploitive in a funny kind of way. So it's, it's sending all the press and fans into a funny kind of state. And we're not really sure now if Ukraine is the dead cert that it was. It probably will qualify being Ukraine, but I think it's middling on the night on Saturday. And I'm quite glad because I don't like that style, but we'll see. Uh, Netherlands is up next, and I've not really been one to champion the Netherlands. I like a left field singer songwriter. I love Kate Bush, for example. And this is the kind of thing that I would have expected to lap up, but I'm not really doing it. But I have to say that on stage it is really effective. She's out on the satellite stage. The backing singers are on the main stage. And the backdrop really works because of the distance. And I don't know. I think this I think this could do the business, actually. Not the, the business to win, but certainly get to the final. And I actually would love to see that for the Netherlands. The Dutch fans have wanted this to happen for such a long time. And I would really love to see it there just for them. Yeah, I'm stone cold to the Netherlands, but I would love to see them in the final. Uh, Montenegro next, and this is one that's got everyone very excited here in the press centre in Malmo. I have to say, I was expecting more when I saw uh, the run through today. I found the spacesuit gimmick a gimmick. I didn't find it, it lent anything to the song. I know you all disagree with me. I think they'll struggle to qualify with this because I think people will just be recoiling from the spacesuits. Although I'm, I do love the song, I have to admit. I'm, I do I'm love kind it. of hoping Montenegro gets through. I mean, it's a mess on stage, but there's just something that's like it needs to be seen by a wider audience. I'd love to see on the Saturday night. Lithuania is up next. I, I'm a little bit in love with Andreas. Not, not in a huge way, but there's just something that's really, really nice about him. He's very, he's very engaging. He's very endearing, and he seems to have kind of he seems to have toned down the sort of the the, the eyebrow movements and um, and really kind of sexed up the performance a little bit and I was really really impressed by this seeing it in the hall this afternoon it's one of the ones that we went into the arena to see um, and yeah I just kind of think it's really I don't think it's going to do anything at all it's going nowhere near the final but I'm going to enjoy the journey with him while we have that three minutes on stage it's going to be a quite engaging endearing three minutes I think yeah yeah uh, I agree Belarus next oh god this is so 10 15 years ago it's it's dated it's it's camp it's fun it's jolly but it, it, it no no eurovision has gone past this come on it's not good it will qualify belarus is belarus they've got probably 30 points in the bag they just need a few more to up it i yeah i don't like it myself it will make the final but i don't think it should and moldova's up after that um uh, with the, the, the incredible rising woman, she's going up on a plinth with her dress underneath her. Um, it's quite a gimmick, but actually I don't think she needs a gimmick really. It's got, she, her vocal is really, really good and um, I, it's quite surprised me. I think, um, you know, a few people have said that, you know, they've written this off and then actually said, actually, no, it could be a bit of a dark horse. And I, I have to agree with that. I think um, I think Moldova could could just edge it through. They've got Pasha Parfenu um, from last year and they're recycling a, 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 you know, a lot. She's the backing singer. But, um, yeah, I kind of I have a sneaking regard for this. I think it I think it could sneak through and it could do quite good business for them. And I don't think many people are really expecting that to happen. Oh my gosh, Ireland next. Now this really blew me away today. Really, really blew me away. His vocal is enchanting. He gazes into the camera. Um, he's earnest. The, the the whole stage performance is stunning for this. And actually, looking at the internet, people are not rating it, and I don't understand why. It's um, an up-tempo, modern dance number. It's absolutely fabulous. Ireland's best entry for years, I say. And I really think top five on the Saturday. Um, I, I have to agree, actually. I think Ireland's really underrated. I've got a little sneaky bet on it in 80 to 1, which would be fantastic if that comes through. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I, I, I know, I, I think it's it's really fresh. It's kind of like energising, and there's not really that much that, that energising this year. But after Ireland's coming, Cyprus, well, Cyprus isn't energising, but it is very pretty. There's, there's something about that frock she's wearing. It kind of sort of promises a little bit more than it actually delivers. Um, and I think this kind of, you know, even even as a gay man, I'm kind of distracted by that prop because I'm kind of looking to go to, is she really showing? 
not really sure. But it's a song, she just delivers it very, very well. And I hadn't rated this at all, but now, I don't know, it's got a very good draw. It's a very, very solidly delivered ballad. And I actually think that, you know, she might, might, might just make it. I'd be surprised, I have to say. And I think she's still not qualified. But there's a, just, just that little outside chance that she could make it. Yeah, we walked back in um, from outside to see her last run through. And it, it was actually nice. I would have discounted it in a flash. So let's see about Cyprus. Okay, so Belgium next. This guy from Belgium I love. I think he's charming, adorable. I really think Belgium might make it, and they're not actually um, a favourite to get through. Um, he's got two dancers who are doing quite strange things around him. People say it distracts. I actually think he needs something just to give him a bit more depth in the song, because he can't carry it alone. And I actually, I really like the Belgian performance, and I wouldn't be surprised if he qualifies. It's a really good 80s style retro song with oomph. I really like Belgium, and I'm quite surprised. One of my top five. I would agree with that, actually. There's something about the Belgian song that I can't quite put my finger on. It reminds me of something very specific from the 80s, and I can't quite remember what it is. But again, I, I, I think it might qualify. And finally, we've got Serbia. Oh, what can I say? I mean, I, if this is this is one of my favourite songs to start with, but the way that they're staging it is just, it's very disappointing. They're telling a story in the song, they're telling a story of the, the, the woman who's kind of torn between whether she should go with a man or will she ever find true love, and I just, it's not coming across. I mean, in, in, the, in the preview performance in the, in the national final, they had the angel and the devil of the divided conscience. And it worked really well because you instantly got what the song was about, even if you didn't get the lyric. That's all gone. They're looking like they've been dressed in a jumble sale. And I just don't think it's going to convey the message. I think most of Europe is going to be really turned off to, or, or just inquisitive about what on earth is going on in stage. Clearly something is going on stage. They're emoting to within an inch of their life. But I just don't think it's getting the message across. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Serbia. I agree, Serbia playing a very risky game with a really catchy song. So who knows? On European ears, thank you for joining us. That's Semi 1. Semi 2 tomorrow. The 17 songs tomorrow. It gets even harder, doesn't it? So thank you for joining us and um, yeah, keep watching and let's have another beer, shall we? Absolutely. See you soon.